After you open the book and go past the title page and the copyright page and the note to the reader that mentions the fact from fiction essay, then there is an introduction that begins the book proper. And that's what I'm going to read here. They called me the great Clavette. Well, truly, and in all transparency and honesty, I gave myself that name. They did call me that, but only after I put on posters and declared it to be true. The trick, which proved easy, was to make myself and my act worthy of the label. They also called me the Man in Black. Again, I gave myself that name, but it also caught on. But I was born Merton Clive Cook in 1848 in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Or was I born in Wisconsin in 1868? See, I made my living being larger than life, entertaining crowds and performing, telling stories, making them laugh and share tales of my world travels. Now, all these years later, after telling so many stories so many times, it's hard to remember which are true and which are not. A fabrication, or maybe exaggeration is a better word, told again and again lodges itself in your brain and becomes truth after a while. Add old age to the equation, and it's a very and it's all very tricky to navigate. Here's the thing. A crowd doesn't want to hear about a little boy named Merton Cook in Wisconsin. They want the man in black, mysterious, full of wonder. A newspaper doesn't write a story because a boy's father dies and his mother moves him to the Wyoming Territory. Or at least they don't until you make a name for yourself as the Great Clavette. Then the papers want to know, who is this person? Where did he come from? And can his story sell us papers? The problem is, then, your whole livelihood is wrapped up in these stories. The splash and spectacular are far more enticing than the mundane truth that you'd rather forget. So here it is, my life account, setting the record straight before I'm not able to do it anymore. What can you expect? Well, much of the stories you've heard are true. I did cross the Atlantic multiple times, though maybe not 32 times. I knew Buffalo Bill, Harry Houdini, Mark Twain, and P.T. Barnum. Did I almost broker a deal to move Shakespeare's house to Long Island? Maybe. Did I te teach Sir Arthur Conan Doyle the dark arts? Yes, and that hack has been ripping me off ever since. Did I perform for Queen Victoria, King Edward, Lord Kitchener? Did I study art and sculpture under Auguste Rodin? Could I speak nine languages? Yes, yes, and yes. Was I the greatest shadow graphist, silhouettist, mind reader, equilibrist, phrenologist, magician, illusionist, pantomimist, necromancer, slack and tightrope walker, hypnotist, juggler, prestidigitator, and painter of all time? I tend to think so, but read on and judge for yourself.